art dolls and this is the girl we carved in our last tutorial video and we're going to start doing her face up and remember what I said if you saw the last video um, sometimes when you are doing the face up you notice that there are pla places that still need sanding and you notice that because when you place a pastel the color will recede into where it needs to be sanded more and that's completely okay but for now I have sprayed her with MSC Clear Matte Varnish. This is the flat one, which is the best one actually to get. And you let that dry a little while between each stage we're going to spray. Some of the materials I have are brushes, preferably fluffy brushes. These are makeup brushes. This is actually a painting brush, but it's like a makeup brush. Regular flat brush. Another makeup blush brush. This is another makeup brush. I have the little eyeshadow applicator. This came with one of my pastel kits and it holds tiny pieces of cotton or whatever you want to put in there to hold the paint works pretty nicely some smaller brushes and then I found these on eBay um, Moore's More Estate sells them and they're these little swabs and they're awesome for getting into those small places you have from very small to uh, nice fat and round a lot of these swaps and these are great because they're softer on one side and harder on the other and they're pointy and then I also do use the rounded soft ones and this one's been used already but I'm going to show you okay so you can get these anywhere dollar store target anywhere as far as um, coloring the doll, the doll's face up, I love the pan pastels. They're quite expensive, so I only have a couple colors that I figure I would need um, besides the pastel colors that I already have. So this is the skin tone, but it's a little bit darker than the doll's skin tone. This white is shimmery. I love it for around the eyes. And this pink is also shimmery. I also love, love, love these Rembrandt pastels. And I buy them separately according to what colors I need. They're rather expensive, so I'd rather do it that way. And these are some of the colors that I use regularly. I don't always use all of them, but these are the mostly used from the Rembrandt collection. Black, of course. And I love this color. It's a pinkish um, brown. And I don't see the color on there. Oh, Matter Brown 3. Vermilion 2. Matter Lake Deep. Red Violet, Black, Cadmium Red Hue 4, it's a little orangey, it's not necessarily, and Permanent Rose. I love to use this for the blush, the brownish, pink. And then for highlighting the lighter pink and so on. Also for the lips, I use them a lot. Then I have just some of the colors. I may have to pull out some other colors as I go, but some of the main colors for my pastel set 
that I use a lot. You can tell I use this a lot too. I start light and work towards dark and you'll see how I do that. An eraser is great, especially when you're doing the eyebrows or the lashes and you can erase or thin them out. Very good to have. And then also I have these little bins. These are from cat food. So I recycle them. I wash them really well and then use them to mix paint or mix pastels. If you want to wet the pastels a little, which I will do a little bit on the lips, you'll see. I will use these. Another thing I use for my dolls, and I use this to do the eyebrows, is I have a template where I've cut out the different shapes that I want to use. And I'll be including a downloadable sheet so that you can cut out your own template. And basically, um, you can cut it out of uh, vellum or even cardstock if you'd like. Uh, I like the vellum because it's very thin and see-through so that when you reverse and do the other eyebrow, it will, uh, you will see where it can be placed. And if you see, I, I mark lines on there. So sometimes I will mark a line and then I will turn it around and know exactly where it's going to go. Okay. I'm going to start with the lips and I like to put the darker shade inside um, and I like to do it wet. So I'm going to show you how I go about doing that. I'm going to get one of my darker colors and I'm going to scrape it with one of my little scraping tools I used before for the carving. And you can also mix colors this way, so it's a really good idea to, to do this when you are using the pastels. Sometimes I just go straight out of here. But if you're going to wet it, your best bet is to shave it into a container. So I put a little bit of water on this so that it gets wet probably should use the thinner one. I'm going to switch to a little bit thinner one. I may end up using my very thin brush, which is actually a nail brush for nail art. And they're even sharper than this. This one has been used already a few times. So I'm going to start on the inside. And when you wet it, it will sort of go into the little creases easier and then I kind of pull it out so you want to make sure you go over all the creases that I formed before and I've got the lighter color lighter color here a little swab. And then what I'm going to do for her is I'm going to use the same pink around the eyes. So again, I'm going to just take it right from here. And you just go around the edge of the outside of the top. And if your doll has, your Blythe will have, for example, blue hair, you can put some blue in this area or just leave it natural like I'm doing it. The 
then I will go back to the little swab. Okay, so I'm going to use this swab again. To do the inside of the eye a little bit like this. Or the inside corner of the the eyelid. She's turning out perhaps a little more around the nose and I think we're going to give this girl some freckles so that you see how that works so what I'm going to do first is I am going to seal this going to seal her and then I will be back and show you how to do the freckles okay so we're back and we're going to do some freckles so we're going to use this other container and I put a little bit of this brown shaved into there and a little bit of the blush color that we were using and we're going to add it with a brush flat brush because you're going to do this and you're going to splatter it onto her face. It gives a really nice freckly look to it. But you need to get this nice and wet. So you're going to mix the colors. And then you're going to take her and what I usually do is if I don't want any on here I will put my hand here and then slowly splatter it where you want it okay and then you can take it off where you may not want it It landed someplace you don't like, like on the lips or somewhere on the nose. And then what I do is I take the very small little swab, you could use do a brush also, and I kind of squish the little drops a little. And that makes them a little more subtle. And then we can also use this to add some extras. So your first layer of freckles will be splattered. It's a controlled splatter. Kind of like how she's looking there. And then with a very small, and I think we could use this one again if we take the all the red off of it we use for the lips. And that's a good thing about these mats too that I'm using. You can blot things on it. So I'm going to take this again and load it up. And then very carefully I'm going to add some random freckles are random so you're going to add them randomly I haven't made one with freckles in a while and I've forgotten how much I like it they're so cute with freckles And you 
do it until you're satisfied. Again, you can always go back and kind of tap on those if they're too dark or you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Pan Pastels, the one that's a little bit shimmery. I love this color. I really don't know what it's called. Um, I basically don't know the name of colors. <laughs> I just, I look at them and I know what I need. So um, actually, I'm loading up the big, the small brush, but I'm going to use this bigger brush. Okay, dab it on, on the pad. And then you're going to just kind of pounce it around the cheeks and the lower part of the eye. And a little bit um, over the nose. A little bit on the chin and her nose. And she has a nice little cute glow to her. Okay, so next we're going to do what you would do is seal it, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to do what I preach, and I'm going to go ahead and start the eyebrows. I'm going to use one of my fluffy swabs and this is how I do it. I get the brown and I basically rub the swab on it and then I get my template in which you will have um, be able to have a copy of these so that you can trace them and cut them out. I use an exacto knife to cut them out and you can make them all different shapes. You can have a bunch of different shapes. This was originally just um, for people, and I just used it and cut these out also above it. So if I do make a bigger doll. So I have a longer one and a shorter one, I think. I'm gonna use the shorter one. I'm gonna kinda of give her like a, her eyebrows are gonna be a little bit slanted. So notice that I have a line here. That's where the eye opening is. So I'm gonna place it how I'd like. And then I'm going to just pat with a swab. It's going to leave a very light mark. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, turning this over. Okay, let's see if we can get it the same. If not, we can always wipe it and try again, but that line should really really help you and that's a good thing for doing it lightly because you can always go back and touch up if it came out a little shorter looks about right I like that so you can always make it a little bit longer and you're going to be using colored pencils next so what I like to do before I use the colored pencil is I use my mechanical pencil, if I can find it. There it is. It's a .05 mechanical pencil, regular mechanical pencil. I have not been able to find these with the leads in different colors, that's what I really need, but with this I will do the little lashes that go under here, and then I will start on the eyebrows. And they're not brown, but then I can trace them with the brown and it's going to be a little more precise. And it's going to give me a very, very thin line. So you're going to start up and then slowly angle. And then I go to the edge and I start to work in. See that? You might like it like that and just want to leave it like that. Or then add the brown over it, which is probably what I might do. So, the best thing to do is to turn it upside down because it's very difficult to get it exactly the same. So you're going to do the best you can. Go from the outside in. And you're using that pastel, very light pastel marking. 
to guide you. You'll see I made a little bit of a mistake there. Not a problem because you get your eraser and remember you've sealed this so it will not come off if you use the eraser. Okay. Very light hand. Okay, make it a little bit darker on this side so it'll match. And then you just keep working it till you get it the way that you like it. You can do a few different things. You can take more brown and shade it in some more. Or take a brown colored pencil or whatever color you're making the lashes. And this is where those pointy swabs come in. Very helpful. <laughs> Remember, you can use the eraser, make a little bit of a mistake, and that's not so bad. That can be a little boy, maybe, I'm thinking. I really don't know what they're going to be until I'm done, because it depends on how they turn out. And then I decide, well, a boy or a girl. It still depends a lot on the eyes and, of course, the hair that I'm going to use. So if you would like... Uh, watercolor pencils are the best to use for this. They're so a lot softer. And you just go back over the pencil marks that you just did. And it's not rocket science. It's, uh, well, it was rocket science for me until I started using the templates. And I make reborn babies and I also make cloth dolls and I actually use this template on those too. So just to give you a starting point. So you keep working it until you like the way that it looks. And I think she's ready. We can do a little bit of highlighting to finish her off. Maybe with our little pearlescent pan pastels that I love so much. Give her some shimmer. And even around the eyes if you'd want. Make her eyes pop a little more. And I will have a picture of her finished at the end. I am hanging my cell phone off the light to film this so the lighting is not that great okay now we're back and our very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the little lashes that go down here there's two different ways you can do it you can make a line right up against the lid and I suggest you do that with a light color I'm going to use pink for that and you kind of trace the edge and you get a little bit of a darker color also for that It's really up to you if you want to do it right up against the lid or you want to make this little edge to put it on. It's a little more realistic if you do it this way. And you can also put some white on the inside. And this is how you would put eyeliner also basically. I just put the point of the pencil right up against it and just move it and it'll go right on there. It's very subtle. Okay. Then when you do the lashes, you're going to, it's kind of like a little bit of cross hatching. You're going to do little marks like this 
and then you're going to go across them. So I'm going to show you on her. Very carefully, I'm using my mechanical pencil because I want them to be very, very thin. I'm going to go back over a little bit at an, at an angle and if I get one too long I can go with the eraser see how I went over the white a little by mistake there and then go back over it Let's do the other side. For some reason, this is not marking like I would like it to. Okay. better. Okay, and then once you've got that, then you can do the same thing you did before with the brown if you wish, and go over what you just did. And as light or as dark as you want to, depending on the type of blithe you're making. Okay, and I think that's as much as I want on her. Nothing too drastic or dramatic. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and spray her, and then we will see some photos of her. I'm going to put her eyes, some eyes in her, so you can see how she looks. You may want to gloss the lips. I may do that a little later. Or you might want to leave them matte. It's really a preference of how you want it. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this video.